Ladies and gentlemen, this battle is scheduled for three three threes. Uh, amateur, 56.7 flyweight action. Painters in distinction, ladies and gentlemen, of course, when the bell rings in charge of the action is national and international referee, Mr. Greg Glenyans. Coming up, round one. So as I was saying, the other thing I think is going to be very interesting to see is Brad's developed quite a jiu-jitsu game under the uh, Cardioflex grappling coach of Dylan Opitz. And he's recently started training under Matt Jones. Now, I, he's only started training about four weeks ago. I don't know if he's necessarily got enough uh, context for the things he's learned or necessarily be able to put it all together. But that being said, his grappling looked sensational last fight. And he's always had good striking. So be very cool to see two very well-rounded flyweights against each other. And round one brought to you by Painters Distinction. For your, your, all your painting needs, make sure you follow them on Facebook. Follow all our sponsors on Facebook who bring this show to you and proudly support all the athletes fighting on tonight. Kyle, clearly not bothered by the fact that his opponents are southpaw. I think there's a number of guys at ATT. Oh. Two heavy like shots by evolution. Wally. Oh, nice. Oh, wow, big knee. I mean, definitely watch out for these two. They keep up a very frenetic f pace. Yeah, they really do. They like to bring the, the fight to their opponent and try and make them challenged of... Try and create opportunities for mistakes. Give your opponent the opportunity to do the wrong thing. Nice little straight left there. Now, Wally Stoll is very reminiscent of Demi uh, Ooh, DJ. Nice. nice single leg. That's very reminiscent of uh, heavyweight, ex-heavyweight champion Mike Turner. <laughs> Three of Mike Turner. You can see this is really good though. Kyle digging under. He's trying to go deep for that half guard. Locking down deep, his deep, left deep. leg. Yeah, he's going deep again. And now he's going for a leg lock. Can't actually do that in amateur. Uh, well, he can't go for a rotational lock, so that'll be interesting. He can go for a straight ankle lock though. Brad's doing all the right things though. Definitely yeah, the nice. frenetic pace. Constantly up and down. Oh. Sucking deep guillotine oh, here. Oh, yeah, that is a deep guillotine, but it looks like Kyle's got a good angle on it. He's, he's creating enough space that I think he's able to breathe here, and it doesn't look like Brad's able to push his shoulder down into the head quite enough there. Still letting go of it. Yeah, I, I think Brad's just happy having control of him for a moment. I don't think he thinks he's going to finish it, but the thing he's got to be careful Final for is that he doesn't blow out his muscles in his arm. Still got that single leg, though. I'd like to see him just pummel here. Just pummel and get, get double underhook. Kyle using good head position just to consolidate the position, get him up against the cage. Yeah, look at that head position. He's got it digging straight into the chin of Brad. Oh, great reversal by Wally. Oh, beautiful. Controlling the jaw, controlling the line, but here's that single leg. Really again. been great with that single leg all fight so far. Yeah, it's clearly a preferred technique for Brad. 20 seconds left in round one, brought to you by Painters of Distinction for all your painting needs. Again, swarming Ant-Man. thing with, with Ant-Man, and Ten obviously seconds. Maestri as well, these guys don't tire. They keep the same pace for all three rounds. Yeah, I agree and I disagree. I think that they don't tire like heavyweights tire. Ten. They tire yeah. for flyweights. So what you'll likely see is they'll still keep a similar pace. But they might not necessarily keep the That's same amount of pepper in every shot. Utonic. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? You tonic. Like that. <laughs> yep, you tonic. You got it when you get you tonic. It's drinks for life. The heights from round one. You see mm -hmm. Ant Man really staying in the center of the cage here. We see Thank some you, heavy Ant. kicks and shoot against the fence. Both corners very relaxed. I think both corners were very comfortable with what now. they saw. Ant Man definitely had great success all through the first round, constantly going after and after that single leg and hitting it twice. Maestri not taking a stool either. He's standing, he's clearly wanting to send a message that he's not tired, he's ready to go. I can still see both guys' chests heaving MMA pretty heavy. Though. Around Australia, of course, it's right here. William McGarry Room, Adelaide Oval, seconds down, round number two. Carl Maestri, Brad, Ant Man, Wally. So we see Trent Winter, one of the matchmakers of DFC, looking on, handsome as ever. <laughs> All right, here we go. And again, this is my favorite part. This is where we see the corrections. 
A nice inside leg kick as well by Wally. Again with it. Wally using good head movement, but he's leaving his hands oh, on the line. Oh, another straight. Work. Speaking of leaving your hands low, Kyle clearly not caring for the power of the end. Some man. reckless striking, and I love it. Yeah, I think that was Kyle just taking an attitude of, I've been hit by dudes that hit harder than you. I don't care. I'm just going to swing at you. And Wally is one of his training partners, Shane Mitchell, obviously fighting number one right. ranked. Another solid in the straight left. Oh, and Another. really landing that left over and over again from Ant-Man. Spat out the mouth guard. And it's rookie mistakes like that that hopefully he learns and doesn't do silly things like that. I'm not when sure he if that was broke. showboating or if it actually fell out. I think he was actually trying to showboat and it fell out while he was showboating. So... But he's given Kyle a chance to recollect himself. And like I said, the dude trains with sharks. You know, if you don't take advantage when you have... And watch Wally's head moving in and out, constantly changing levels and fakes. Again, landing that left over and over again. Kyle's actually changed to southpaw as well. Oh, yeah, Ooh. knee in the groin. That's the second for the night for those playing at home. Mm, I wonder if we get six replays of this too. They're thinking about it. Here we go. I'm not sure that's nope. the repeat from the first round for highlights. Yeah. Again, first round, I believe. No, this is the second, but this is where he tried to show, yeah, show that. <laughs> Probably worth noting if he'd invested in a better mouth guard, it wouldn't come out that easy. <laughs> See again, oh. Kyle showing reckless disregard for getting hit. Again, uh, Ant Man changing those levels, but Kyle's still taking it to him. Yeah, Kyle's pinning him oh, up. Well, that one hurt him. Yeah. Still got one minute to go See, on this, this round. See, this is what I mean by Brad. Brad is looking tired here, and it's not tired like a heavyweight where he's heaving, put his hands on his knees or anything like that. But he's not just not necessarily as explosive or quick as you might otherwise see him. Still so looking. Oh, oh, look at that! Still got the strength from Ant Man. Still got the strength to hit that double leg. But talking about Ant Man training with sharks, look at the pedigree that comes out of ATT. Uh, sorry, I was talking about Kyle with the sharks in ATT. <laughs> oh. But yeah, absolutely. Brad Brad does train with some scary dudes at uh, Cardio Flex as well. Still got that control, using that head position to try and keep Kyle down. And then I think he's just using this. I don't necessarily think he's trying to pass too hard. Yeah, he's, he's not trying to rescue that right knee. He's looking for this guillotine from on top. And Brad has a, a pretty strong guillotine. He's got a very strong upper body, strong arms. Ten seconds left in the second round. Yeah, he's not going to get the finish here, but I think he's now just trying to send a message to the judges. You see the hands are low now. He's, yeah. He's actually a little distracted by the tape in his gloves. There's your 10 seconds left in the round. 10 seconds! Oh, Brad really just, swinging yeah. to the fences with that. Time. Yeah, Brad was really just trying to line up that big overhand left. And I mean, in fairness, if your opponent's dropping his hands, it's not necessarily the worst strategy, but it's not also not necessarily the hardest thing to read. So I think Suman will, <laughs> will definitely want to have a word to him about that and make sure Kyle is putting his right hand up a bit. Also looking forward to tonight, we've got two other... Well, we've got a co-main event and we've got the Legacy Cup. So Legacy Cup with Nick Edwards and Dan Curry. Legacy Cup, as Jimmy White announced earlier, after Greg Toyama, who's one of the, the founding fathers of MMA in South Australia. Two absolute beast middleweights coming in, which also has some title implications here. Two up-and-coming fighters, hungry fighters, coming off uh, both impressive victories from last GFC, coming against each other. And also our lightweight championship, the number four Second ranked Australian down, lightweight, Greg, sorry, Greg Atsori against Main number Street, three ranked in Australia, man. Ethan Dunham. Ethan had a very tough fight against Anthony Bino, uh, DFC 5. Obviously, that brought him into the main event picture tonight. We'll hype that later on, but until then, round three of this and amazing nice action between Wally and Maestri. And Brad again going to this single leg. I reckon he's going to go to a high clutch. Yep, there it is. 
is keeping his head planted against Kyle, which is going to mean that Kyle is going to have to try and shift his weight off of him. Kyle is current carrying his weight at the moment. And Still head. using that head position, keeping his hips oh, well above mount. Kyle's hips. Moving his knee straight through. This is beautiful work by Brad here. Great defense Brad going by to, Kyle as well. Well, it's interesting because uh, Kyle was a blue belt, if I recall correctly. But Brad is just really, uh, I mean, Brad is also a blue belt, but Brad is just really smothering him with his jiu-jitsu. Not the first time that Kyle's been in this position. He seems very calm, showing much experience beyond his age. But Brad's in the forge position right in front of his corner and just got mount on Kyle. Yeah, that was very slick. Managed to use that. It's just still great defense by mount. Kyle he's, as well. He's being pushed at the hip. Bad positioning for Kyle as well against the cage right in front of the corner of, of there you see Matt Jones and Craig Ike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is what I want to see. I want to see Brad push the face and start landing shots again. Kyle, Kyle needs to try and reach an underhook so that he can try and either hit a deep half or try and get a knee through or even just spin Back all the half way guard. out. Half guard is good. This is a big improvement for him. But again, that smothering jiu-jitsu. I mean, look at it. There's no space for Kyle to breathe here. For those who've had their head against Anybody the cage, the it building? is not a pleasant feeling as well. It's just cold, hard metal pressed against your skull with nowhere to give. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, frankly, I'd rather have the cage resting against my head than somebody's elbow. Uh, but You the, adapt to either scenario, though. Well, yeah, my, <laughs> my head is big and rather tough. But here you can oh, see, this is again, this that head control. You, in can, here, you can see I was talking about before. Brad is using his head to control Kyle's head. But I yeah, actually okay, posturing up now on Sunland Bonds. Yeah, this is good. Landing those shots, it looks like Kyle tried to grab the cage there. Kyle sitting back out, beautiful work. Turns, gets that half guard back again, but I don't think that's all he wants. He needs to just keep moving. The rest of the way, is he coming from an arm triangle? Or? I think he's trying for an arm triangle, but it's not really there. Like, he's sort of, he's got a little bit of a gift wrap and was just trying to make it work. I think when the, the clock's counting down and you really want that finish, you start sacrificing technique to just show urgency and try and get after it. But I think Kyle's defense is going to be too high for anything like that. Oh. To show. Final seconds. Ten Rams seconds. on top. If Brad can get the still, back here, this is going a for the finish. Position. Brad needs to use his hips. Get that second hook in first. He's using that team. Nah, there it is. Very technical fight from both guys. You can see the disappointed look on Kyle's face. You can see the frenetic punch oh, from round yeah. one as well. These guys came up I with an absolute bang. And, and here goes some Brando and again. <laughs> again the uppercut, wow, second one, bang. Brad and Man Wally. Now this is the last we're going to see of these two. Still 22 TFC and 19 years action, old. Obviously a bright rate, future ahead of both of them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, there's For a huge future for Don't both forget guys. those guys, ladies and gentlemen. P.O.D. Give it up for the boys, please. Absolute battle between these two. Showing years experience beyond their age. After three rounds of action, we have unanimous decision. Our winner comes way of Blue Corner, Brad and Ben Wally. Hometown crowd Carl loving Maestri. that. Carl Maestri, come on, big future. We'll see him soon. Come on, Carl, all right. Definitely nothing to hold your head down. Cole Maestri, 19 years old, two on one still as an amateur. Still got a bright future ahead of him, and he's going to be Maybe around sure for many years here. to come. Yeah, I, know you're there. I see y'all. I see y'all. The lovely Katie, and of course sportsmanship. That's what yeah. one at DFC. That's what mixed martial arts is about. Teams, in arms. combat, on, boys. and Good respect. Job. Well done.